Hey AP Physics 2, this is Mr. Heinrich and one of your fellow students requested that I do this FRQ. Actually what they requested was that uh, they needed help with a certain portion but I'm going to do a video for the whole FRQ. This is FRQ 1 from Unit 3. So we're in electrostatics right now and we have this sphere that's hanging from a string and it looks like these students, I'm reading the the verbiage that you guys have. Students are investigating the electrical charge charging of objects. They have conducting sphere one that is suspended from an insulating string as shown in the figure. They rub the sphere with a cloth to charge it and they want to determine the sign of the charge on the sphere. They have also or they also have the following equipment. Then they give us these different pieces of equipment and we really don't need to look at those. We're looking at part A, describe a procedure the students could use to determine the sign of the charge on sphere one, including the measurements to be taken or observations to be made. And if you had a chance to already look at this, you know that we really don't need measurements, we just need some observations. So to be quick and to the point, I'm just gonna draw a picture and describe what I would write, but not actually write it because well, that would take more time. So this is Unit 3, FRQ 1. And what I would simply do is I would take my sphere, my conducting sphere on an insulating string that's connected to some kind of ceiling, right? I would rub it with a cloth. And then I would put those parallel plates. And they told us that we have the ability to, uh, to know the charge on either one of these plates or, or actually create the charge that we want on these two parallel plates. So I would put these plates on either side of the sphere. I would make sure that this plate was positive and I would make sure that this plate was negative. And we can easily see that we would have an electric field that is going this direction, right? But the point is, if this sphere did this, if it deflected this way, well, then this would obviously obviously be what kind of charge? It would be a negative charge, right? If the sphere deflected the other way, it would be a positive charge. Negative here because it's attracted to the positives and also repelled from the negatives and vice versa for this situation. So if I was writing this out, I would say rub this sphere with the cloth thoroughly. That's step one. Step two, place parallel conducting plates on either side of the charged sphere. Step three, make the right plate positive and the left plate negative. Step four, if the sphere deflects right, it has a negative charge. If it deflects left, it has a positive charge. And you could say, if it deflects right, it has a negative charge because it must be attracted to the positive plate. And if it has a positive charge, it would deflect left because it would be attracted to the negative plate. You should probably say that. So that's part A. And then we get into the part that's, let's see, let's make sure that wasn't like A1. No, that was part A. So part B, let's look at it together. It sets up some new parameters for us. And I'll let you read all that on your own. But we have this situation right here, right? So they lower the ball with the string so that it's on the same level as sphere two. So they're in the same exact horizontal line, right? Assume that each sphere, each time sphere one is rubbed with the cloth, let me blow this up for you, the same amount Q of charge is deposited and that after N rubs with the cloth, the net charge on sphere one is NQ. What does the charge on sphere one and two after they have been touched together indicate what property of the sphere is responsible for this distribution of charges, right? So this is part B1. And if you remember correctly, if I have two spheres, I'm just drawing a picture here, and one of these has like, I don't know, plus four Q, right? And then this one has, that's a Q right there. And this one has zero charge, it's neutral, right? It has no excess charge, positive or negative. And I touch these two together and I separate them and assuming they are the same size sphere, right? We would have the situation after of plus two Q and plus two Q. There is a conservation 
of charge, right? We have to have the same amount of net charge at the end of the story as we had at the beginning. And since these spheres are the same size, they both will adopt the same amount of charge on either sphere, right? That's important to remember. So looking at their wording, they're saying, what is the net charge on sphere one and two after they have been touched together? Well, if you remember before they were touched together, now let's get specific to this question. Before they were touched together, here's sphere two, here's sphere one. This one had an amount of charge N Q. All right, and if I touch this sphere one to this sphere two, and then I separate them again, what would your after effect be? Well, based on the example I just shared with you, this one would be NQ divided by two, and this one would be NQ divided by two. So that's the first thing I would say. I would say the net charge on sphere one and sphere two would be NQ divided by two. Indicate what property, then it says indicate what property, of the spheres is responsible for this distribution of charges. The property is that they are both conductive spheres. They both allow the flow of electrons, right? So you'd say they both have the charge NQ over two after touching. And the property that allows this to take place is that both spheres are conductive. Let's go into B2.